journey of gratitude after the COVID pandemic. Let us approach the Lord who makes all things new for all the blessings and graces we received during the COVID pandemic. After every petition, let us say together, Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. For reminding us of the fragility of life, shielding us when no one else dared to shelter us, and opening our minds to what is really essential, let us thank the Lord. Thanks be to God. For allowing us to connect with one another with faith and love, despite the isolation that sickness had imposed on us, let us thank the Lord. Thanks be to God. For the heroic kindness of those who provided us with scientific, social, and spiritual help when doing so was both risky and life-threatening for them, let us thank the Lord. Thanks be to God. For the gift of newly discovered medicines and vaccines to combat the virus and the wonder of natural immunity, let us thank the Lord. Thanks be to God. For the gift of assuring presence when we were anxious and distressed, depressed and lonely and impatient during the pandemic, let us thank the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Loving God, no thought of ours is unknown to you. No tear we shed is unimportant to you. No joy we celebrate is alien to you. You entered our world of sickness, suffering, and death, and you know the fears we face. Accept our thanksgiving for your provident love during the COVID pandemic. As you wept at the death of Lazarus, breathe the breath of life everlasting on all those who died from the coronavirus. You have turned our fears into joy, and for this we thank and praise you. To you be glory, now and forever. Mary, help of Christians, pray for us. Saint Michael the Archangel, pray for us. San Roque, pray for us. Good morning, brothers and sisters. Please stand as we begin our Eucharistic celebration. <laughs> the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, we celebrate today the solemnity of the Annunciation of the Lord. We celebrate the Prince of Peace being born through the womb of Our Lady. May the Prince of Peace, conceived in her womb, bring again peace to our world today, especially in countries at war, especially Russia and Ukraine. We also join the community of the Antipolo Cathedral 
as today their cathedral is formally declared as an international shrine of Our Lady declared by Pope Francis. May their shrine continue to lead people to Mary and to Jesus. To prepare ourselves to celebrate this Holy Mass, let us first acknowledge our sins and humbly ask the Lord for His pardon and strength. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are Son of God and Son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are Word made flesh and splendor of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in, in the, the highest, highest and, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We, we praise you, you, we bless you, you we adore you, you we glorify, glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord, Lord God, God, Heavenly, Heavenly King, King, O God, Almighty, Almighty Father, Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, You take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who willed that your word should take on the reality of human flesh in the womb of the Virgin Mary, grant, we pray, that we who confess our Redeemer to be God and man may merit to become partakers even in his divine nature who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord spoke to Ahaz, saying, Ask for a sign from the Lord your God. Let it be deep as a nether world, or high as the sky. But Ahaz answered, I will not ask. I will not tempt the Lord. Then Isaiah said, Listen, O house of David, is it, it not enough for you to weary people? Must you also weary, my God? Therefore, the Lord himself will give you this sign. The virgin shall be with child and bear a son, and shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Here I am, Lord, I come to do your will. Here I am, Lord, I come to you to do your will. Sacrifice or oblation you wished not, but ears open to obedience you gave me. Holocaust or sin offerings you sought not. Then said I, Behold, I come. 
Here I am, Lord, I come to do your will. In the written scroll, it is prescribed for me. To do your will, O my God, is my delight, and your law is within my heart. Here I am, Lord, I come to do your will. I announce your justice in the vast assembly. I did not restrain my lips, as you, O Lord, know. Here I am, Lord, I come to do your will. Your justice I kept not hid within my heart. Your faithfulness and your salvation I have spoken of. I have made no secret of your kindness and your truth in the vast assembly. Here I am, Lord, I come to do your will. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, it is impossible that the blood of bulls and goats take away sins. For this reason, when Christ came into the world, he said, Sacrifice and offering you did not desire, but a body you prepared for me. In holocaust and sin offerings you took no delight. Then I said, As is written of me in the scroll, Behold, I come to do your will, O Lord. First, he says, Sacrifices and offerings, holocaust and sin offerings, you neither desired nor delighted in. These are offered according to the law. Then he says, Behold, I come to do your will. He takes away the first to establish the second. By this will, we have consecrated to the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please all stand. Christ. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. The angel Gabriel was sent from God to a town of Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin betrothed to a man named Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And coming to her, he said, Hail, full of grace, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at what was said, and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. Then the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. For you have found favor with God. Behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give him the throne of David his father, and he will rule over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end." But Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I have no relations with a man? And the angel said to her in reply, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, 
and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. And behold, Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived a son in her old age. And this is the sixth month for her who was called barren. For nothing will be impossible for God. Mary said, Behold, I am the handmaid of the Lord. May it be done to me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. Brothers and sisters, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. My dear brothers and sisters, we are gathered joyfully this morning in celebration of this great solemnity of the Annunciation of the Lord. And today also, as we celebrate this great feast, it is a joy for all of us that today, the Vatican formally declares the Antipolo Shrine as an international shrine of Our Lady of Peace and Good Voyage. Meaning, the devotion is not only propagated here locally, but it is recognized by our Holy Father, Pope Francis. Mayroon pong koneksyon ang Manila Cathedral sa Antipolo Shrine. Dahil po dati, ang Antipolo ay parte ng Archdiocese of Manila. At noong kinoronahan pontifically ang mahal na birhen ng Antipolo dito sa Luneta, pagkatapos doon ay nanatili dito ng mahigit isang linggo ang mahal na birhen ng Antipolo bago siya inuwi sa kanyang dambana. At kamakailan lamang ay bumaba muli dito sa Manila Cathedral ang original na imahen ng mahal na birhen ng Antipolo. Our Lady of Antipolo has been also a part of the story of the Manila Cathedral. And so we are joyful that their shrine is declared today as an international shrine. But as we have been talking about shrines, the solemnity today also reminds us that Mary was the first shrine of Jesus. Why? Because when Jesus became man, Jesus first dwelled in the womb of Our Lady. She was the first shrine of Jesus. Ang ating mahal na ina, siya ang unang dambana ni Jesus. Sapagkat noong maging tao ang ating Panginoon, siya ay nanatili sa sinapupunan ng mahal na birhen. Kaya kung nagdiriwang man tayo ng Antipolo bilang unang international shrine, huwag nating kalilimutan, nararapat lamang ito sapagkat ang ating mahal na ina ang pinakaunang dambana ni Jesus kung saan siya ay nanirahan at nanatili sa sinapupunan ng ating mahal na ina. And this was foretold even in the Old Testament that was read to us from the book of the prophet Isaiah, when God told the, pro told the king Ahaz that a virgin will bear a child, and this child shall be called Emmanuel, God with us. God willing to dwell with us, God wanting 
to dwell with humanity. And the first dwelling place of the Emmanuel was the womb of the Virgin. And this was all fulfilled in the celebration we commemorate today, the Solemnity of the Assumption, when the angel Gabriel visited Mary and Mary said to the angel, Let it be done to me according to your word. The Holy Spirit came to dwell with Mary and the Son, the only begotten Son of the Father, was incarnated in the womb of Our Lady. Mary was truly the first shrine of Our Lord Jesus Christ. But Jesus did not just dwell physically in the womb of Mary. Jesus dwelled also in the heart of Mary. Ang ating Panginoong Heso Kristo ay hindi lamang nanatili sa sinapupunan ng ating makal na ina. Ang ating Panginoong Jesus ay nanirahan din sa puso ng kanyang minamahal na ina. That is why in our second reading today from the letter to the Hebrews, Jesus did not just have a body. Jesus also, in becoming man, had a will. And Jesus did not just offer only his body, but together with this body, he offered his whole will to God. We are reminded that Jesus is united to Mary, not only physically, but when Jesus was conceived in the womb of Mary, Jesus was also conceived in her heart. They are united, not only in body physically, but they are united in their hearts. Kaya nga mga kapatid, anuman ang dalhin natin sa puso ni Maria, sigurado tayong dinadala niya rin sa puso ni Jesus. Whatever we bring to the heart of Mary, she brings also to the heart of her son. I know many of you here are pilgrims today. You have visited the Manila Cathedral, the Basilica of the Immaculate Conception, and we go to Mary in her home here in this cathedral. Let us remember, my dear brothers and sisters, whatever we bring to Mary, she brings to her son. Kaya po, Ano man ang dala ninyo ngayong umaga na ito na panalangin. Sigurado ho ako may dala kayong mga dasal ngayon at intensyon para kay Maria. Sigurado tayong ito'y dadalhin niya sa kanyang anak. Sapagkat si Maria ang pinakaunang dambana ni Jesus. Ano man ang dalhin natin sa kanyang puso, dinadala niya sa puso ng kanyang anak na si Jesus. Let us be reminded today, my dear brothers and sisters, that Mary was the first shrine of Jesus. And whatever prayers we bring to her heart, surely she will also bring to the heart of her son, Jesus. After this homily, we will profess our faith and we will kneel down on the words that declare the incarnation of Jesus in the womb of Our Lady. And as we kneel down in silence, let us bring to Mary the first shrine of Jesus, whatever we want to say to Jesus, because we know 
that whatever we bring to Mary, she will bring to her son. Amen. Please all stand. Let us now profess our faith. I believe in one God, the, the Father, Father Almighty, Maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, Born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through Him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. Let us all kneel. Please stand. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. And, and his, his kingdom, kingdom will have, have no end. end. I, I believe in the Holy Spirit, Spirit the Lord, the, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church, I confess, I confess one, one baptism, baptism for the for forgiveness, forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and, and the life of the world to come. Amen. Through the faithful obedience of the Blessed Virgin Mary, God takes flesh among us. The mystery of the Incarnation calls us to our loving Father through the Incarnate Son. For every petition, let us say, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. That the church may be seen as the incarnation of the working body of Jesus Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. That people of goodwill may learn that Christ has united himself with every person in taking our human nature. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That scientists and technologists may work with novel ideals to further human dignity and happiness. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That pregnant mothers may welcome the new life as Mary welcomed her son. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer that those who have died may be forgiven of their sins. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Father of the Incarnate Word, we bring our intentions before you, the fabric of our daily lives made holy by your Son, our brother in the faith, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated.
soul's hand. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His holy church. Be pleased, Almighty God, to accept your church's offering so that she who is aware that her beginnings lie in the incarnation of your only begotten Son may rejoice to celebrate his mysteries on this solemnity who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For the Virgin Mary heard with faith that the Christ was to be born among men and for men's sake by the overshadowing power of the Holy Spirit. Lovingly she bore him in her immaculate womb that the promises to the children of Israel might come about and the hope of nations be accomplished beyond all telling. Through him the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Please kneel. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
Please all stand. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Jose, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through Him, and with Him, and in Him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, come thy, thy will be done, on earth, earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give, Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us now offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Please kneel. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the Supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Please all stand. Let us pray. Confirm in our minds the mysteries of the true faith, we pray, O Lord, so that confessing that he who was conceived of the Virgin Mary is true God and true man, we may, through the saving power of his resurrection, merit to attain eternal joy through Christ our Lord. Amen. Last year, also on March 25, Pope Francis led the consecration of the whole world to the Immaculate Heart of Our Lady. And Pope Francis called us once again to renew this consecration today, March 25, a year after we prayed the consecration. So we will now all kneel as we again pray the prayer of consecration to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. Act of consecration to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. All together, O Mary, o Mary Mother, Mother of God, God and our Mother, Mother in this, this time of trial, trial we turn to you. you. As, As our, our Mother, Mother, you love you us and know us. us. No, no concern, concern of our hearts is hidden is from you. Mother, Mother of mercy, mercy, how often we have experienced your, your watchful care and your peaceful presence. presence. You, you never, never cease to guide us to Jesus, Jesus the Prince of Peace. Holy Mother, amid the misery of our sinfulness, amid our struggles and weaknesses, amid the mystery of iniquity that is evil and war, we remind us that God never abandons us, but continues to look upon us with love, ever ready to forgive us and raise us up to new life. He has given you to us and made your immaculate heart a refuge for the church and for all humanity. By God's gracious will, you are ever with us. Even in the most troubled moments of our history, you are there to guide us with tender love. Therefore, O Mother, hear our prayer. Star of the sea, do not let us be shipwrecked in the tempest of war. Ark of the new covenant, inspire projects and paths of reconciliation. Queen of heaven, restore God's peace to the world. Eliminate hatred and the thirst for revenge and teach us forgiveness. Free us from war. Protect our world from the menace of nuclear weapons. Queen of the Rosary, make us realize our need to pray and to love. Queen of the human family, Show people the path of fraternity. Queen of peace, obtain peace for our world. Mother of God and our mother, to your immaculate heart, we solemnly entrust and consecrate ourselves, the church and all humanity, especially Russia and Ukraine. Accept this act that we carry out with confidence and love. Grant that war may end and peace spread throughout the world. The fiat that arose from your heart opened the doors of history to the Prince of Peace. We trust that through your heart, peace will be done once more. To you, we consecrate the future of the whole human family, the needs and expectations of every people, the anxieties and hopes of the world. Through your intercession, May God's mercy be poured out on the earth and the gentle rhythm of peace return to mark our days. Our Lady of the Fiat, on whom the Holy Spirit descended, restore among us the harmony that comes from God. May you, our living fountain of hope, water the dryness of our hearts. In your womb, Jesus took flesh. Help us to foster the growth of communion. 
you once trod the streets of our world, lead us now on the paths of peace. Amen. Please be seated for a few announcements. For all our pilgrims today who have come here to the Manila Cathedral for your Lenten pilgrimages, you may venerate the relic of the wood of the true cross of our Lord, which is enshrined at the Jubilee Cross of the Manila Cathedral. So sa may bandang likod po ninyo ay makikita po ninyo ang Jubilee Cross at naroon ang kapiraso sa tunay na kahoy ng krus ng ating Panginoong Jesus. There is also a copy of the prayer projected there, and you may say the prayer as you also say to the Lord your petitions and intentions. You may also visit the Adoration Chapel of the Manila Cathedral, which is here on the first chapel on your right. Uh, you may come forward later and visit the Adoration Chapel where you can quietly pray in front of the presence of our Lord in the Blessed Sacrament. Holy Week is coming near and our schedule, the complete schedule of our Holy Week for this year is already posted on our social media pages. So, if you have not yet followed the Manila Cathedral page on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube, please follow us so that you may be updated regularly of our activities and our schedules here at the Manila Cathedral. We will also be um, celebrating the Sacrament of Confession this coming Holy Week. So from Holy Monday to Holy Wednesday, our confession will be from 9 a.m. to 12 noon and then 1 p.m. to 4 p.m., so almost the whole day. And also on Holy Thursday and Good Friday, the whole day until evening, we will be celebrating the sacrament of confession for all pilgrims who will be coming here. Let us pray that we will have a meaningful and holy celebration of Holy Week. Let us all stand and receive the final blessing. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless all of you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Holy Mary.